What you're looking at right now is actually a quilt design that comes from the American Amish culture of the early, early 20th century. These quilt patterns are extremely inventive, creative, and oftentimes mirror the same kind of concepts and insights that the Islamic culture has developed over the past centuries. What about if I told you to unlock the beauty of this art which is made in the art doom in Iran, you need more than art or uh, creativity. You need something that you do use it every day in real life, which is mathematics. For example, this art was made through geometry. And that geometry is not the one that we learned about it in school. This geometry full of symmetry and proportion. This artwork made thousand years ago from one of the mosques in Iran. So today I'm here to tell you another aspect of math through geometry. This tradition of Islamic geometric pattern goes back centuries and is perhaps the richest source of this type of creativity and pattern origination that the world has ever seen. These patterns can be fascinatingly complex, uh, visually spectacular, and also can often convey a profound symbolic meaning. The patterns, although they are very diverse and nearly infinite in possibilities, tend to fall into three recognizable categories, one of which is based on the art of calligraphy, the decorative form of writing in which the letters are both readable but are also a visual, spectacular, and pleasing pattern with rhythm in, a, in its own right. This has the benefit of being not only something beautiful to look at, but can be read and understood in terms of uh, the language of the Quran. A second category is what is known as the arabesque style. This utilizes floral or vegetative uh, type of plant-like forms, curvilinear, often very intricate, often interweaving in regular but fascinating ways, and then the third category, and the one that we're going to focus on primarily today, is what's known as the geometric patterns. And this is a case in which tessellated or puzzle-like pieces of various polygons fit together and can create enormous complexity and richness. The third type of Islamic uh, art David talked about was about Islamic geometric pattern. Now, there is a question we want to ask ourselves. Is the people who built this artwork, what kind of tool they were using it? Well, it turned out this complex, beautiful pattern made only two basic simple tools that you can find it everywhere, which they are straight edge and compass. From these two simple basic tools, a very diverse, complex, beautiful pattern will be emerged. Those pattern basically made on uh, based basically made only of line and circle. One of the most popular historically mo one of the most popular motifs or elements in these visual patterns is what's known as the eight pointed star. This is a this is a figure that is very easily accomplished by starting with two squares, taking a second one overlapping the first and rotating it to a 45 degree angle. This exposes all, all eight corners of the, of the two squares and creates the star pattern. This has a wide distribution culturally around the globe. It is a, a prominent motif in the uh, Capella Palatino in Palermo, Italy. And uh, it has been known to, has been seen to occur in both Asia and Europe and also Africa. Now David talked about this beautiful pattern, which people call it eight-pointed star, while some other people call it Dawood of Salima. This pattern, as David mentioned it, can be found as far in Italy or in Middle East or Iran. Even you can find it in North of Africa too. But the question is this, how can we make both this pattern historically? Well, let me guide you through this. 
first we need to create a horizontal line, then follow a vertical line. These two lines intersecting the point will be meeting in the center of the canvas. From this, we create in a circle, and then four more circles will be follow up. All these four, all of these circles have the same radius. Now we have a multiple location that all the green circle intersect. We draw our first uh, square, which will be be our basic block for our tessellation. And after we have all those lines and circle, we will be finally able to creating the pattern. And after we have a lot of copy of those patterns, we can just uh, split them through the space and the, the entire space will be filled out with this pattern without gap of overlap. A very practical way of proceeding or beginning these patterns is to start with a very regular uh, grid-like structure that can be composed using the straight edge and the compass. This is a pattern like the one you're seeing right now, which is composed primarily of overlapping circles and triangles. This gives us a fundamental skeleton upon which the uh, designer can choose or select various shapes to put together and combine or connect one point to another and create various shapes primarily based on the hexagon. We're going to look at a few examples to show you how diverse and how many possibilities can result from this kind of pattern. In the first slide, you see the original grid. The second pattern in the center shows the structural pattern divisions of the, pad of the tile in red highlights. And then, of course, these divisions are exemplified and highlighted by giving them contrasting colors. The real effect occurs when the tiles are put together and we get this extended display of the pattern in repetition. We have another example coming from the same basic grid. And you can see that the visual variety is, can be striking. Here's yet another, pan, another example and another one still. And one more, all based on the same fundamental hexagonal based grid. When we are working with artistic patterns and repetition like this, uh, from an artistic point of view, uh, the concept of symmetry comes up quite naturally. For artists, symmetry is a relatively simple concept. We have what's called bilateral symmetry that we're all, I think, pretty familiar with. This is when the pattern has a mirror image type structure, like the pattern you're seeing now, where the left side and the right side re reflect or repeat one another in reverse position. But the axis of, of reversal can be not vertical. Instead, we can have horizontal symmetry, such as this pattern. One more possibility would be the diagonal pattern, which all of these can be utilized by artists for various reasons. And then there's a fourth category that artists are fond of, and that is what's known as the radial symmetry. And this we see both in an Islamic tile pattern, as well as the flower and the dome of the Pantheon in Rome. But symmetry from an artistic point of view can be relatively simple. From a mathematics point of view, it gets a little bit more involved. I still remember the first time I was in class and it was uh, David turn to talk about symmetry for students and he mentioned symmetry and I say, you know what, we don't think about symmetry this way, but I, I will let you finish it. And when he finished it, maybe for the, the next three classes, each class was two hours, I was only talking about symmetry. And uh, that's why we, each dif discipline have a different way to look at the same notion. To us, to understand symmetry, first you need to understand another notion, which is called transformation. So transformation is basically moving point in space based on certain mathematical rule. To understand transformation better, just look at the, the way animation works. The animator creates a character and then moving that character from a place to another place. That's exactly transformation. Now... Let's go back to uh, symmetry. What is uh, symmetry? Well, symmetry is a special type of transformation. If you have a character, if you have an object, you apply transformation, you apply some movement, and after you uh, movement is done, you look at the shape, and the shape still look like the same, then that's what you do is symmetry. For example, 
if you look at that, those uh, uh, design that David do it for me, uh, all of them except the first one is non is no symmetry. So because if you look at the second one, when you rotate the the shape forty uh, ninety degree counterclockwise, it doesn't look like the same thing that you started with it. That's why you know all of them is not symmetry except the first one. So rotation is transformation, but not necessarily be symmetry. Exactly same thing true for other type of transformation. For example, uh, reflection. Reflection can be symmetrical or not. In all those example, none of them in the bottom is symmetrical. Why? Because after you see it, my face is changed. So now I talk it about symmetry and transformation in general. Let me move to symmetry of the Islamic geometric pattern. And we go back to our old friend pattern, which was a point symmetry. That pattern is very popular. And for a reason. Why? Because very rich in terminal symmetry. Actually, this pattern have eight types of symmetry. One of them rotation by zero degree. Yes, you hear me. Sometimes doing nothing in math mean doing something. Rotation by zero is symmetry. We call it do nothing. The second one, rotation by 90 degrees. If you, if you look at the animation, when the rotation happened by 90 degree, the shape will be on the top on the original one. Same thing can be made when you apply rotation by 180 degree and so on. Rotation by 270 degree and rotation by 360 degree. Wait a minute, we don't need to do rotation by 300 degree because rotation by 300 degree is exactly rotation by zero. So we have three or four, if you want to count it, do nothing uh, as a four type of rotation. Now we have a different kind of symmetry, which will be a reflection. In this case, is if, you rot if you have a vertical line that pass through the, 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 the center of the uh, pattern, and if you uh, reflect it, you see that one pieces of the shape move to the other pieces of the shape and so on. And that's how math different from art. We think about symmetry as a movement. They think about symmetry, hopefully I'm not wrong, as a static. This side look like this side. So in total, that simple shape has a type of symmetry. And guess what? We have another popular shape that have the same exact symmetry, which is Circle. This predilection and this recognition of the virtues of symmetrical patterns in design uh, is not a human invention. Nature has beat us by millions of years. The organic forms of animals and plants rely on what is often called bilateral symmetry, as you can see in some of the examples there. Also some radial symmetry if we look at plant forms or maybe even starfish. Humans, though, have also recognized this, and not only in Islamic culture, but in other cultures as well throughout history. This kind of pattern making and symmetrical repetition has been utilized. What you're looking at right now is not an Islamic pattern, but actually a quilt design that comes from the American Amish culture of the early, early 20th century. These quilt patterns are extremely inventive, creative, and oftentimes mirror the same kind of concepts and insights that the Islamic culture has developed over the past centuries. We have yet another example that shows a different Amish quilt. And again, compared to what is a primarily a, a fairly basic Islamic pattern, you can see the similarities. These are simultaneous or parallel discoveries in two different parts of the world, two very different cultures. And one more slide shows the, the Amish quilt on the left that shows a kind of diagonal shape. Um, and if you look closely, you'll notice that it is very reminiscent of a very traditional Islamic pattern known as the bone tessellation. So next time when you are going to see a beautiful uh, masterpiece or architect or art, ask yourself what kind of math and art into this a piece of art. And I want you to think about math and art as inseparable discipline. They come together. They form a language that transcends culture, religion, 
on history. And to bridge those kind of disciplines, to bring this kind of diverse thinking together, is something that yields a richer human experience, and that's why it matters. Thank you.